Number 64 says, what is the length of a segment whose endpoints are 3, negative 2, and 7, 6? There's a couple ways you can go about doing this one. Um, first off, we want the distance from one point to another, so we can just use the distance formula. And there's the distance formula. I'm going to write it down over here. Square root of x of 2 minus x of 1, which shows you how far the x's are apart. Squared y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. This is just a derivative of the um, Pythagorean theorem. If you were to graph these, they want to know how long this distance is. You could actually recount it from negative 2 to 6 is 8 from 7 to 3 is 4, and then you'll just do a squared plus b squared equals c squared because it makes a nice little triangle for you. So to find the other length, you could do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and it would work. The distance formula is just a derivative of that. Uh, x comes before y, x comes before y. This is the second time I wrote them. This is the first time. I always say that because it makes it easier to tell where everything goes. So my x squared term here is 7 minus my x1 is 3. 7 minus 3 is 4, right? See? y sub 2 is 6 minus negative 2 squared. See? 6 minus negative 2 is 8. So you can work this out. I like to do everything underneath first before I get to anything else. I mean, you can do it all in one long string, but that just seems really like loserville to me. Eighty. So you get the square root of eighty. Uh, there's a couple ways to go about it once you get to this point. Uh, you can start typing in the answers, or figure out what square root of 80 is. Gives you 8.94. And then just try your answer choices. So that gives you 8.94 just like you need. Now, mathematically that's not really the best way to go about it. What they're trying to get you to do is simplest radical form. When we have a radical that doesn't actually make a, a nice functional square root, like you get a decimal answer, what we need to do is figure out if there's any squares hidden under there. So anything inside that's divisible uh, is a factor of 80 that's a square. So I'm going to start close to 80 for the squares. Squares would be numbers like 7 times 7 and 8 times 8. So in fact, I'm going to start with 8 times 8. And I just go down from there. 64 would be the first one. Then down from there would be 49. Down from there would be uh, 36. Down from there would be 25. See how none of these are giving me answers that don't have decimals? No integer answers. Well, when I do 16, it does work. So 16 times 5 gives me 80. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite the square root of 80 as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Now we know that the square root of 16 is 4. This is as far down as the 5 goes, so I do 4 times the square root of 5. The reason I start with the square closest to 80, by the way, is to make sure this is my final answer. If you go up from the bottom, 4 goes into 80 as well, but then you'll have to redo the same process again to get that extra 4 out, and then it would be 2 times 2 is 4. Don't waste your time. Start with the number closest to the 80, and then go down. You get 4 times the square root of 5. So the answer to number 64 is J.